In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at matrix word problems. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up matrices to answer these real-world problems. So the first one here deals with books. At the beginning of January, the central computer showed the following books in stock. So it looks like they have two different facilities, two different stores, San Francisco and Los Angeles. And there are three different types of books, hardcover, softcover, and plastic. And suppose its sales for January were as follows. 700 hardcover books, 1,300 softcover, 2,000 plastic books sold in San Francisco, and 400 hardcover, 300 softcover, and 500 plastic sold in Los Angeles. Write these sales figures in the form of a matrix, then show how matrix algebra can be used to compute the inventory remaining in each store at the end of January. So we're going to need to set up these sales in the form of matrices. So let's take the January information. And first they talk about San Francisco. And in San Francisco, they say there are 700 hardcover books, 1,300 softcover books, and 2,000 plastic cover books sold. Then it says in Los Angeles, 400 hardcover, 300 softcover, and 500 plastic books sold. Now what do we need to do? We need to represent by using matrix algebra the inventory remaining. That's going to be the key. That's the key in the problem. How much inventory is remaining? So we're going to take the inventory that they had to start. That was the information given to us. So that was this quote-unquote matrix, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 for the information in San Francisco pertaining to hardcover, softcover, and plastic. Same difference with Los Angeles, the 1,000, 5,000, 2,000. And we're going to subtract the sales that were made in January. And the key is to make sure that since we're subtracting, the corresponding values are aligned. So when you set up your matrices, that's oftentimes the challenging part about the, the process, is establishing the correct dimensions, number of rows, number of columns, that coordinate to the information. Here, to get our remaining inventory, we're going to subtract those two matrices. What are the dimensions of those matrices? Those are each two rows, three columns. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the alpha zoom or the alpha F3 matrix template option for my calculator. I'm going to set up two rows and three columns. I'm going to simply do this matrix subtraction. So I want you to take a minute and enter these matrices into your calculator and take a picture of your work, and let's get the remaining inventory from this book distributor. Now what you're going to have to do when you get your result is not only give your answer matrix, and here is my answer matrix, you're going to also have to give your interpretation. Now what does that mean? Basically what it means is you're going to have to label what the corresponding rows and columns represent. Now this one here, the first row represents the San Francisco store. The second row represents the Los Angeles store. So what we'll label our answer matrix with San Francisco and Los Angeles for the rows. And then our columns represent the hardcover soft cover and plastic books or plastic cover books. So this is what it means to interpret your resulting answer matrix.
An ice cream store sells both green tea and mocha ice cream. And a small portion of each sells for 75 cents. So as small as 75 cents. And a large portion sells for $1.25. During a short period of time, the number of ice creams sold in total were given to us in this table over here. And what we need to do is we need to, in number one, write down a matrix N representing the cost of each portion of ice cream. Well, here they give you the costs. So here we have a small portion. costing 75 cents and we have a large portion costing a dollar 25 and they said set this up in a matrix and call it letter n so this is going to be matrix n now multiply the two matrices and interpret the resulting matrix so here we'll take our original matrix we have green tea and we have mocha and we have small and large. And here's our information. And we want to multiply that by our cost matrix, which is 75 cents and $1.25 for small and large. So here I'm multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix by a 1 by 2 matrix. So I'm going to enter this into my calculator, although some of you might be saying to yourself, well, why are we doing that? Well, watch what happens when I enter this into my calculator. And here I'm getting this error dimension mismatch message on my calculator. And remember, the only way you can multiply two matrices together is if the number of columns of the first, that has to match the number of rows of the second. So in this case, they clearly don't match because the number of columns of the first is two, the number of rows of the second is one. And not just do these numbers need to match, this two and this one, but those two values must represent the same thing. So for example, what does this two represent? This two is the number of columns of the first matrix. But what do the columns of the first matrix represent? The columns of the first matrix represent the sizes of the ice cream. The columns represent the small and the large. So that means not only does the second matrix need to have two rows, but those rows must also represent small and large values. So in this case, we're going to set up two rows, and the rows are going to represent small and large. So here our small ice cream costs $1.75. Our large ice cream costs $1.25. Now the number of rows of this matches the number of columns of this, and they both represent the same thing. So here we're going to set up matrix N, because that's what the question wanted, but they want matrix N to represent the cost. So here our matrix N must be a two by one matrix that looks like this. So that's the key to doing these matrix questions, these word problems. You have to set them up so that they're aligned correctly. Now the number of columns of the first matches the number of rows of the second, and they both represent the sizes of the ice cream. So that means your answer when I do this on your calculator is going to be a two by one matrix. What does this two represent? That represents the rows of the first matrix. So in this case, it represents the types of ice cream. So that means my answer matrix, which is going to have two rows, the rows are also going to represent the types of ice cream, green tea and mocha. The number of columns of my answer matrix, well, my answer matrix is going to have one column, 
whatever this column represented in this second matrix. What did the column represent? Well, it represented money. Dollar twenty-five for the large, seventy-five cents for small. So this one is going to represent money. So when I do this in my or on my calculator, my answer matrix, the rows are going to be the types of ice cream. The column is going to represent the money. So make sure you include your picture for your answer. And again, the interpretation, the rows represent the type, so the green tea and the mocha, and the column represents, in this case, money. So this particular ice cream store made $7.25 on green tea ice cream and $8.25 on mocha ice cream. Our next problem deals with population and the distribution of the population across our country. It says in 1980, the U.S. population broken down by regions, and it looks like they mentioned the Northeast, the Midwest, the South, and the West. And then they give you the population in 1990 for each of those four regions as well. And what you need to do is you need to set up the population figures for each year as a row matrix. So they're telling you they want you to use a row matrix. What does that mean? It's going to have values all set up in a row. And then show how to use matrix operations to find the net increase or decrease from 1980 to 1990. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the information in matrices. I'll start off with 1980, and here they mention the Northeast, and its population was 49.1 million. The Midwest, 58.9. The South, 75.4 and the West, 43.2. So here's my 1980 matrix. I labeled the columns by the region, and the row just represents the populations. And then they give you the 1990 values. And here it says the Northeast is 50.8 million, the Midwest, 59.7, the South, 85.4, and the West, 52.8. And again, the row represents the population. Now the question is asking us to use matrix operations to find the net increase or net decrease from 1980 to 1990. Now if you look at your your values. In each of these regions, the population has increased. For example, the West went from 43.2 million up to 52.8 million. Now, how am I going to show the net increase or net decrease? What well, clearly it increased. So I want to have my answer matrix represent the fact that the population increased. So I want my I want my populations to be positive. How do I find the net increase or net decrease? You're basically going to subtract. For example, if you take the West population and if you go from 43.2 to 52.8, it looks like it increased by 9.6. How did I get the 9.6? I took the 52.8 and I subtracted the 43.2. And I want this difference to represent a positive number to show that the population increased. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 1990 matrix and I'm going to subtract the 1980 matrix. Why am I subtracting in that order? Because then it'll take the larger value minus the smaller value, and that'll give me a positive result showing that there's a net increase. If you had a decrease in population, then you'd want to signify that with a negative number. We'd have to subtract 
in the opposite direction. But here we're trying to show that there's an increase from 1980 to 1990. So that's why I'm going to subtract the matrices in this particular order. So I did some editing so you can see my two matrices, but you certainly don't need to do that. I'm just looking for the resulting answer matrix, which is right down here. And remember, what you're going to have to do is not just do this calculation and get your result. You're going to have to give your interpretation. You're going to have to label the rows and label the columns of your resulting matrix. So here the row represents the population and the columns represent the different regions, so the Northeast, Midwest, South, and West. Now we have a problem that deals with a company making different types of computers, and it says Microbucks Computer Company makes two computers, so it looks like they're talking about the Pomegranate 2 and the Pomegranate Classic. The POM2 requires two processing chips, 16 memory chips, and 20 vacuum tubes. The POM Classic, and they give you the same information for each of these types. So maybe what I'll do before I get disorganized is start to label my information, try to set it up in matrices. Because here, what we're going to have to do is do matrix multiplication that allows you to compute the total cost. So let's set up some matrices and see what we have going on here. So here I'll take my two computers, the Pomegranate 2 and the Pomegranate Classic, and they mention there's processor chips, memory chips, and vacuum tubes. So let's get organized here. It says the Pom 2 two processing chips, 16 memory chips, 20 vacuum tubes. The Palm Classic, one processor chip, four memory chips, and 40 vacuum tubes. Then they talk about in this next sentence that there's two companies that supply these parts. We have the Motorel company, and we have the Intola company. So why don't I get organized with that information? So I have the Motorel company and the Intola company. And it says the Motorel can supply them at $100 per processing chip. So I'll set this up. Processing chip Motorel will be $100. It says $50 for each memory chip. And then it says $10, $10 for each vacuum tube. While Intola, and here's the information for Intola, it says $150 for processing chips, $40 for memory chips, and $15 for vacuuming tubes. Now it says write down all of this data in two matrices, one showing the parts, so this is going to be my parts matrix, and then one showing the prices, so this is going to be my prices matrix. And then what we would need to do is we need to show how matrix multiplication allows you to compute the total cost. So here I have these two matrices set up and I'm going to have to use matrix multiplication and already there's going to be an issue. The parts matrix has three rows and two columns. So the parts matrix is a three by two and the price matrix is also three by two three rows, two columns. And we know that's not going to work. We know the number of columns of the first, that has to represent the number of rows, or be the same as the number of rows of the second. So we're going to have to adjust our matrices. Now, what I could do, since the first matrix has 
two columns, I can just simply switch the rows and the columns. That's what we call in math the transpose. I can just simply transpose this second matrix so that it becomes a two by three. So why don't I do that? I'll take my first matrix. I'm going to keep that as is. And then what I'll do is I'll take the transpose. I'll switch the rows and the columns of the second matrix. So now I'll have the columns representing the parts and the rows representing the two factories. So this is going to become a 2 by 3 matrix. So Motorola, the processing chips are $100, memory chips $50, the vacuum tubes 10 And for Intola, 150 40 and 15 Now, this is going to work because now I'm multiplying a 3 by 2 by a 2 by 3. Now, remember, these two numbers have to match, but they also have to represent the same values. This 2 represents the columns of the first matrix. So in this case, represents the two computers. This 2 must then also represent the two computers. Now, does this 2 represent the two computers? And the answer is no. This 2 represents the rows of the second matrix, which in this case deals with the two plants that supply the parts. So even though this is going to work mathematically, a 3 by 2 and a 2 by 3, this is not going to give us what we need for our final answer. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to use matrix multiplication that allows us to compute the total cost for parts when the parts are bought from either supplier. So what I'm going to want to have is I'm going to want to have my answer matrix have the suppliers. The suppliers are the Motorel uh, and the Intola. So I'm going to want to have the Motorel and the Intola and then I'm going to want to have the cost for parts for each model. I'm going to want to have the Pomegranate 2 and the Pomegranate Classic. So I'm going to want to have a 2 by 2 answer matrix. So I'm going to have to adjust my information to ensure that when I multiply, I get a 2 by 2 matrix. Now here's what I want. I want my answer matrix, I want the rows to represent the computers. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do in my first matrix is I'm going to have the rows represent the two computers, the Pomegranate 2 and the Pomegranate Classic. So I'll set it up this way. I'll basically take the transpose of the matrix that I set up originally. I'll put the parts along the top as my columns and I'll have the computers be the rows. So the pomegranate 2 processor chips, 16 memory chips, 20 vacuum tubes. The pomegranate 2, 1, 4, and 40. So now I have the rows matching the rows of what I want my answer matrix to look like. I'll set up the second matrix, and what I'll do is I'll have the columns represent the companies that supply. So what I'll do is I'll set up my second matrix, and I'll have the Motorel and the Intola be the columns. So that way my answer matrix 
will come out the way I need it to come out. So now I'll have the processor chips, the memory chips, the vacuum tube set up as the rows. So basically, what I had before for the second matrix would actually work. And this is the challenging part about these matrix word problems. What we're trying to do is we're trying to set it up so that way the matrix multiplication can happen. This comes up a lot in computer science and computer programming when you're writing programs to have your computer do all of these many calculations with large amounts of data. Right now we're just dealing with two particular suppliers and two particular types of computers. Imagine if you had hundreds or thousands, you'd basically be taking all data, put them into matrices, and then programming your computer to do the calculations for you. So now look and see what I have going on. I have a two by three matrix being multiplied by a three by two matrix. The two middle numbers match and they both represent the same thing. This three, the columns of the first, represent the three parts. This three represents the rows of the second, representing again the parts. And then my answer matrix will be a two by two, representing the rows of the first, the computers, by the columns of the second, the factories. So now let's do this multiplication on our calculator. So here's my resulting answer matrix. And remember, not only do you have to do the math, you also have to label your resulting matrix. So the rows represent the computer types. The pomegranate 2 and the pomegranate classic. And the columns represent the factories.